All right, this is the biblical case against Christian feminism and feminism in the Christian household. What does the Bible say the roles of women are? Well, I'm going to show you. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22 to 24. It says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Wives are to be subject to their husbands, not uh, an independent, feministic type of woman that we see today in today's society. Wives are to be a meek and quiet spirit and subject to their husbands, according to scripture. So if you're a Christian lady out there, this is not my standard, this is God's standard. Paul wrote this under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. Not my standard, this is God's standard. Colossians chapter, or is it Colossians 3.18. It says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it is fit in the Lord. Again, wives are to submit to their husbands. You know, it's very, very simple. And by the way, God put that in there for a reason. He's not doing it to, to hate on women. He actually put it there for the woman's benefit. He put it there for their own good. You know, there are, in fact, studies have shown that women are happier that way. I did a video a while back showing that women actually tend to be happier when they're stay-at-home mothers. It's very, very simple. And when they're subject to their own husbands. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. So the head of the woman is the man. And again, God put that in there for a reason. He put it in there for actually the woman's benefit in many ways. That's how it goes. Again, not my standard. This is God's standard, not mine. This is Jehovah God's standard. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 5 to 6. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 5 to 6. For after this manner, in the old time, the holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands. Verse 6, even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well, and are not afraid with any amazement. Likewise, ye husbands dwell with them. You know, I'm reading the next verse. Likewise, ye husbands dwell with them according to knowledge. You know, so the role, there are rules for husbands too. But look at that. You know, Sarah obeyed Abraham. You know? you know, subjection unto their own husbands. Very, very simple. Feminism and Christianity are diametrically opposed. You cannot be a feminist and be a Christian. That's the rules of women according to scripture, not my standard. Again, I'll keep saying it. It's, it's God's standard for the woman. So uh, I wanted to put that out there. Feminism is, is a, a recent development within Christianity. Uh, feminism is wicked. I mean, it, it's rebellion. It, you know, rebellion is the sin of witchcraft, all this other stuff. Feminism encourages fornication, abortion, prostitution, all this other wicked stuff. You cannot be a Christian and be a feminist. The godly Christian woman will be a subject and will be a meek and quiet spirit, too. They won't be, like, outgoing and, and um, loud and obnoxious. They'll be a meek and quiet spirit, you know? And again, there are roles for husbands, too. The husband is to love and protect the wife. I mean, if I have a wife, if I get married, I'm supposed to protect her and provide for her. So if I'm not doing that, I'm not doing my part, and I'm sinning, too. So there is a role for, for husbands, too. It's not just all for the women. So I want to put that out there. Feminism is very wicked, and feminism is sin. You cannot be a Christian and be a feminist. So this is the biblical case against Christian feminism in the household, or Christian feminism, I say, quote-unquote. So anyway, God bless you. Goodbye.